Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Before and the, before we get real crazy here, as soon as I find it again, in compliance with Circular 230, the advice provided in this hangout is not intended to be used and cannot be used by you or any other person or entity for the purpose of avoiding penalties that may be imposed under the Internal Revenue Code or any applicable state or local tax law. I need to find a better word for that. Further, this advice is not intended to be used and cannot be used by you for the purpose of promoting marketing or recommending any tax-related matters addressed within to another party. Ta-da! His path just left. He'll be back. Rhonda's back. I am back. I got my head Good morning, there. Wendy. Good morning. I'll make sure we're transmitting live here. Oh, reload. Janice by the pool. Because she's lucky. Because <laughs> she's not in Missouri. Yeah, they closed all the pools here. <laughs> oh, it's because all the kids are back in school. I don't understand. If it's 100 degrees out, why do you close? Pools. Yeah. Go figure. I wanted to go to Oceans of Fun and just lay out and get tan, but my tan's going away. <laughs> <laughs> Dang those plans. I know, right? Is it warm there, Bruce? Uh, it's a balmy 79. Wow. We're supposed to hit like 90 today. Oh, we're supposed to. Uh, <laughs> well, you're on where? Phoenix? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going to Phoenix on vacation in August. I... Good morning, Ted. Good morning, Bruce. Nancy, Nancy's watching us, so we have to give her a bunch of crap for not being here. Well, she had unexpected guests. No, her husband had unexpected guests. <laughs> That's still her. It's not her you fault. You know how that works? Well, not necessarily. I'm rooting for you, Nancy. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> it's not your fault. What happened to Seth? He said he'd be back in a few minutes. Oh, okay. Needed more coffee. Good cup. Like the rest of us here. Ugh. And Brian Stovall is hanging out with the Intuit gang at the Midwest Accounting Show. Wants to know if we have any questions for them. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing I can do live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terry, are you using Chrome? Yes. I, I keep looking for your lower third. I'm working on it. <laughs> oh, she works great with it's you, okay, Bruce. Terry, I understand all of having problems with lower third. Trust me. Yeah, I, I'm in there. I just don't see where to accept. Turn. You have to make done. make sure you turn it on. Oh, that would help, wouldn't it? Yeah, there's a button. there's a little button at the top, and it says on and off. Yeah, then they have that little button down below because it's fun development. Yeah. Give money. They're asking for money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll make it work what did Nancy just time. say? <laughs> I want to make sure I read it proper, like here. She I says, mean, now wait, if I were the one with company, I'd be taking time off and leaving him with the office. Thanks, Rhonda, for sticking up for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We love you, Nancy. We just miss you. I was going to do something. I can't remember what it was now. I finally got a good morning start today. Well, that's a good thing. Yes. I found out my kids no longer have to start at 7 a.m. They're going back to a normal schedule because the school couldn't make it work. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So now I don't have to get them up at the crack of dawn. Just a little later, I guess. It's hard enough getting up a little later anyway. Exactly. But not at, at least I don't have to get them up at 6. 
so that will be nice. Um, I do have a question. It's more, I guess, I don't think it's a tax standpoint. Um, That's okay. You have QuickBooks people in here. Yeah. Um, Seth will be back in a minute if we don't know it. Now I have to figure out what it was because <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. I literally just had it. Questions. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh wow. Okay, let me go find some notes and see if I wrote it down. <laughs> oh. uh, What's everyone up to today? Working. Finding new things. I'm on golf duty. <laughs> um, Tina Critcher is watching us also. Says oh. good morning to everybody. Morning, Tina. Good morning, Today Tina. is the day for the termite terminators. Yep. Terry, I just sent you something. Oh, she got her lower third. I, I sent you a better logo. Can you? You're muted. Bruce's Terry, is that what she said? <laughs> nice. Uh, More like Bruce's slave? No, she's the office person, supervisor lady. <laughs> AKA slave. <laughs> so, does Terry know all your deep dark secrets, Bruce? Do what? Does Terry know all your deep dark secrets? He's got a good part of them, yeah. <laughs> good. Okay, Terry, you see the little chat box? <laughs> Spill the guts. I'm sure for the right price, you probably would. <laughs> I so think you turned it off to change it, Terry, and we can't hear you. So does Terry work in your office, Bruce, or...? Not if she can help it. Oh, okay. <laughs> no here? <laughs> what language is that? Oh. Man, I chased her off. No, she's having What was that? My text telling me I have a, <laughs> I have a fax. Of you some... Says you have a fax? Yeah. Well, Jan, what are you doing in Phoenix? Vacation? My husband had a business trip, so we're taking a few extra days and we're on vacation. So today is a work day. So he's, he's up in, in our room working, and I figured since I have nothing better to do, I thought I'd join you guys. Cool. By the pool. Oh, cool. And last week, I was in Chicago. I went to the IRS tax farm. How was that? So I'm... You know, it was it was good. It was um it's funny, you know how you take a class where you think you know everything and there's like some jewel that you just go, Oh yeah, that's really helpful or else you take a class where you think you're gonna learn a lot and you go, oh, dang, I already knew everything. I mean it was a little bit of that, but um it was overall really good and, and they had all the booths with the people selling you stuff and now I have, looking at all these other things, I've decided now I have my fantasy software hardware component thing, but nobody actually makes it, so I just figure out how to do it myself. But it, it was cool. So you want to hear my, my big, my big. this is what I learned that, that I'm all excited about? Well, sure. Yes, yes. Okay. So you know, like right now, um, the estate tax rules are $5 million. I have, I'm pretty sure I don't really have any clients that are worried about the $5 million goal. Um, maybe one, but, but most of my clients are going to fall under that $5 million. And there's portability. So say you have a husband and a wife, and the husband dies, and he doesn't leave, or, you know, he doesn't leave $5 million to the things. You can move all the assets over to your wife. 
where you can make that portable and let the wife have that $5 million. So that if the husband dies first and the wife dies second, the wife can leave $10 million without any gift tax. This affects a lot of your clients, right? Yeah. Uh, your heads up, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't because most of our clients do not have $10 million of assets. But the law is going to change next year. In, in, and it's subject to change again, but it's going to go to $1 million. And if you think about it, when you take in things like life insurance, your home, we probably have clients who will have over a million dollars in assets. Yes. Which will make us taxes an issue for us. But if somebody dies this year with that $5 million exclusion, you do the portability tax transferred over to the remaining spouse. So even though the gift, the estate tax goes down to $1 million, you've got that $5 million portability carried over so that, you know, I don't have $10 million clients, but I have clients who would have more than a $1 million, so you can increase that up to $6 million because you get that $5 million carried forward. Now, Congress can go in and change the laws, but for, for some of my clients, this is, this is kind of big, a big deal. Yeah. And I think I just lost that. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> you probably lost a few people uh, watching, people. but. <laughs> I, I was geeking out over it because I have a client that this this affects. So. Welcome back. Hey. Nope, can't hear you. Uh. <laughs> Here, can't see. I was really hoping Jan to go to the one up in um, DC, but I don't think I'm sorry. Gonna... I was hoping to go up to the uh, tax forum up in Washington, DC, but I don't think I'm going to make it. Oh, that would be cool. I want to. Something fierce. <laughs> Working on it. Working on it. So, did everybody go to the NATP conference in St. Louis this year? Was that last year? It was Baltimore this year. Baltimore this year. I was at NATP last year because it was St. Louis. What is it? Your house. <laughs> yeah. it, it was. It was well, next year, or this one coming up is going to be where you are already. It's in Phoenix. Oh, is it in Phoenix? And I no, will I'll definitely be going to that one. It's west. I'll go. <laughs> it's hot. It's all right. They make air conditioners. Great big ones. Right. You know, I want to go to one of those tax conferences in Hawaii. I couldn't afford a trip to Hawaii. <laughs> but it's just a few extra tax returns. They have some good deals this time of year for Hawaii. I, try, I just tried to schedule to go on a cruise to Hawaii, but it doesn't work out for us in school and schedules and stuff. So, so I booked a cruise for next April. <laughs> Going before real or, before huh? or after the fifteenth. Um, does it matter? No, not really. I'll have your stuff done. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. Um, yeah, we're actually not going too far. We're only going. We're taking a cruise um to just like San Francisco, Santa Barbara, just local. So we're like gonna keep the price inexpensive, but still be able to go somewhere. Very well, excited. That's, that's nice. Yeah. I'm I'm excited. My kids love going on cruises. They don't they can go on vacation but they don't have to hang out with us. You know, they can go do their own thing and so it's cool. You don't have to worry about them getting lost. Exactly. Exactly. I was thinking about doing a local cruise like to East St. Louis, but you know yeah. it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, the, this is like a stop of like oh what is it? San Francisco, Santa Barbara, oh, Catalina. Where else? I forgot. How long are you going to be in San Francisco? 
Uh, I don't know. I don't have the itinerary. I'm going to say Tina lives up that way. Oh, yeah? Uh, could I write the trip off then? And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, we can talk about that. <laughs> It'd, it'd be something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just talk now, about now you can write off your travel to a business trip. So, so let's say that you were. Wait, going a, oh, wait to a second a here. But here's the thing: I still will be working. I'm still answering my cell phone. I'm still going to have my computer with me. I'm still going to be talking to clients. Yeah, but you're not meeting the clients. That's not the purpose of the trip, though. Yeah. I can I can probably make it happen. <laughs> Somebody's got some loud dogs. Yeah. Rhonda, seriously, isn't your other business? Yeah. What, Jan? Isn't your other business like a golf business? Golf? No. What's your other? Business? It's construction. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, construction. Yeah, okay, the, go the golf the golf thing was. Was, was a question. Yeah, it's a hobby basically for my son. Um, okay. Yeah. But say you're going on a trip for your construction business. Um, you can deduct the cost of your travel to the trip. So let's say there's a construction convention in uh, St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. So you you fly to Galveston, you get on a cruise ship, or maybe you fly to Florida, you get on a cruise ship, and you cruise to St. Thomas. So that cruise is your travel to... <laughs> yeah. Good, good thing my <laughs> account is on the phone. I mean, on, on this hangout. I don't know if he's going to fly with that. <laughs> I'm, Jan, I'm gonna Jan, I'll visit with you later. <laughs> but no, no, that is a legitimate. You have to have a purpose for visit. Um, U.S. Virgin Islands count as nor U.S. North American territory, so your trip is there's different rules if you travel outside of the country. I'm not even going outside of the state that I live in. Well, when you travel, we have to make up. We can't make up. If you had a, a legitimate purpose, like to some place where you had a destination, then you're writing up. Yeah. You've got to not all your rising costs all your time. And Bruce is going to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I'll think I'll find some other write offs. <laughs> Maybe something that isn't. Uh, it was, Questionable? Yeah. <laughs> I, somehow I would get caught on that one. It, it, it's just a gray area, and you have to really I, I know. CYA. I know. Yeah. It's not gray if it's all legit. Now, writing off your cruise around Santa Barbara is not going to be legit, but... Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> you're home. <laughs> However, there are cabinet shops, and there are other people that, that I do know in Santa Barbara. And... Those areas. Wendy, has it stopped raining where you're at? Uh, no, it just started last night and it's supposed to rain for about three days. Is this part of the hurricane or? Yeah, the, well, they're saying it's, you know, the, the, uh, the um, effects of it, but it's not supposed to get real bad. I mean, like, well, last night I walked down to the, I, I live about uh, half a mile from the ocean, and I walked down as my exercise. I walked down to the ocean and I actually got in the water. The waves were really super high because of the because of the storm. It was it was pretty pounding. I couldn't stay in for very long. I usually stay in for about an hour just to you know get the exercise. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's you get the, the edges of the effects. Now, see, Jan, we were doing something wrong because she's a mile and a half from the ocean. A half a mile. <laughs> a half a mile. <laughs> Half a mile from the ocean. It, it takes us three days to get to the ocean. Yeah, we need to do something about that. <laughs> I'm with it. I have an extra bed. I have, I have a bedroom for, for visitors. Five minutes to the office. Ten minutes, five minutes in the other direction, and you're on the beach. With your laptop, they offer Wi-Fi on the beach here. 
Yeah, there's my office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Along with half a million other people. Yeah, forget. It. I don't care. It's all good. They want to help. They can help. They can help. Actually, you, I couldn't. You couldn't get me to move to Florida. I can't handle that weather. No, no, no. This is. I'm in South Carolina. Oh, I thought you were in Florida. No, I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Oh, okay. I have. To, you're in Myrtle Beach. Two of my two of my assistants work in Florida, and they're both dealing with. All that fun stuff. One didn't work yesterday. Schools were closed. Um, they're still hanging in there. Or are they on the on the west side of the one's peninsula? In, or? One's in uh, Key West, I think. Is it Key West? No. Where is she? One's in uh, St. Petersburg, I think. And oh goodness gracious, I have like the memory of a pea right now. <laughs> Telling you. Because you gotta get your kids to leave them off to school. Oh my yeah. They yeah. 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 And I somehow became the boys' assistant coach for golf this year. Fun times. So, do you know how to golf then? <laughs> no. <laughs> Trust me, they don't want me on a golf course. <laughs> I can organize everything for them, and I can do roll call, and, and I can email out, but they do not want me on a golf course. Trust me. Yeah, but I bet you're the cool mom who brings snacks. I do. Yeah, see? My son hates it. My son hates it, you know? Mom, why do you have to bring snack? We're not little kids. <laughs> you know what? I but it's baked goods. I mean, how could you turn down baked cookies? And oh, I wouldn't. Exactly. Mom, you don't need to do that. We're in high school. Yeah. And boy, did those kids love it. They showed up with cases of soda and stuff. Yeah. Oh, seriously. Just Mrs. Bergen, what are you bringing next week? What's next week's cookie or cupcake? or What are we doing for this? Or Yeah. <laughs> I got to have my cookies. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Look at Terry. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I know too. Terry, do you yeah. eat the cookies? Terry, there's a don't, chat thing. No one can yeah, hear you. Don't talk. <laughs> I'm not into reading lips today. <laughs> Up in the upper left, there's a button that says chat. <laughs> chat away. And then chat. There we go. Because <laughs> we're we're not, we're not hearing you. How could you not? It's like a prerequisite that Bruce asks you on an interview. <laughs> forget, forget your phone skills. Do you eat cookies? <laughs> Ter Terry is the message on my uh, business phone. Nice. She has a great voice. <laughs> You're still working on Bruce's secrets. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I have a talk question for you guys. Well, go ahead, Dad. That's why we're here. Um, I have a client that does um, product development. And they're doing spending two hundred thousand dollars in tooling. Um, what would be the lifespan you can write that off on over? How much did he spend on tools? Two hundred thousand dollars. Oh my goodness! For product. Oh. In other words, they're developing a product and they're doing the tooling. They're paying the manufacturer the cost for making the dies and the tools to make the product. So they're not you, making it? No, they're sending it over overseas where the manufacturer is making the product, but they're paying for the oh. tooling for the manufacturer to make it. It's overseas. Yeah, you know how that works. Yeah. But the lifespan of the product before they change it again will be like three years. In other words, the product has a three-year lifespan before they make significant changes to it. So what's the revenues like? Oh, million a year on it. So he's got enough revenues 
said it would be okay to expense it, or 179 is. Yeah, but next I year, mean, 179 is going to be, is it, what, 25000 So when did he, he spend it, though? Did he spend it this year? Yeah, he spent it this year. So it's okay because this year the he can still go that high. Yeah. Because mm. I'm still trying to decide whether it would be better off if they just write it off over three years or just write it off over at one at one time period. Or are they gonna? Are they going to have it for the full three years? Uh, that's the question. You don't know. I mean, they could change the product significantly, and that therefore the tooling doesn't. It's useless. Out once you change the product in any way, the pre prior tooling is useless. You know, it's still an goes, it's still an expense that they're incurring. Right. It just keeps going on and on. So is this a support? A client manufactures paper folding machines. Is it a C corporation? Uh, they're C corp. Okay. It, part of it is if the tax rate is going to be lower this year or is it going to be lower next year? Yeah, they're going to show off, though. So. <laughs> oh, you think so they're going to show off? Yeah, they're going to show off. They have so much expenses, it's unbelievable. So, if you show a loss for this year, you carry it because it's a C Corp. If there's a loss this year, you carry it forward to next year. So then they don't lose it. Yeah. yeah. It's really funny. These are what. It, the couple that owns this business, I call them my seniors because he's 75 and she's 73. <laughs> and they've been doing this for like 20 years. Pretty amazing. Wow. And don't know how to retire. <laughs> how have they written it off before? Uh, this is actually the first time they've actually done the manufacturing and the tooling themselves. Before, they just have bought in other people's machines and they slap their names on them and stuff. And this is the first time they've actually gone around to actually manufacturing the product themselves. Well, cool that they're manufacturing. Not cool that they're doing it in a foreign country, but I understand. Yeah, I can tell you this much. They um, looked into having it manufactured here. It would have cost five times as much. Which is why they did it in a foreign country. Yeah, because of the complexity of the machine and stuff, and all the where all the parts have to come from, and the parts come from like twelve different countries. Pretty amazing. So this sounds kind of tacky, but how do you anticipate their life expectancy? They're still working in vibrant, so I'm thinking. They run circles around me. I'm sorry. I said they run, they run circles. circles. You would never know their age. You'd almost have to project somehow of what they were going to be doing in the next five years or three years. Uh, unless one of them dies, they'll still be running the business. And they pretty much already told me they're never going to retire. Even though they can, they just never will. They're the type of people that's got to be doing something. Well, I understand. And my daughter told me that as soon as I retire, I go into a nursing home. It's working forever. <laughs> So basically, it seems to me like you have a couple of options. You can either take the 179 deduction, or you can depreciate. Um, for equipment like that, I would be going seven years, not three years. Although you're saying three years because it takes three years to do the build out. Well, no, it, the, it's three years is like the lifespan of the product before they would redo it over again completely. 
So the actual lifespan oh. of the product is really three years. In other words, they're going to modify it so much within the next two years that the machine will almost be unrecognizable from the first machine. So the tooling is useless, and therefore I honestly think you could deduct it in a three-year time span. But so if they've got a loss on their tax return for 2012, you'll carry that forward to 2013. So you basically, I would want if I would do 179 deduction over the depreciation, just because you can. Just because you can. Well, then you, get, then, you, then you get then you get to carry it forward. Right. Yeah, but so you're getting you end up having a profit next year. You get a bigger bang for your buck if you have another loss you're carrying it forward yeah yeah it's it's kind of weird the way their company is set up they they actually kind of show a loss but they they're actually making money the reason why they show a loss is because they own their manufacture they own their own building that they own personally that the corporation corporation rents the building from them so you pay them rent and therefore, it kind of shows a loss for the business because of how high the rents are. Kind of a weird situation. In other words, their warehouse, because of how large the warehouse is, they, the corporation pays them like 12000 a month just for rents for the warehouse. And then on the personal side, they show the income of 12000 a month on their personal side, which by the time they deduct all their other properties and stuff like this, and the interest they pay on everything, they almost never pay any taxes. Wait, wait. The corporation, they own the warehouse. No, the corporation doesn't own the warehouse. They own the warehouse as individuals. Never have Corpora a corporation own the building for a client. In this, so, in, so in this as individuals, they own the warehouse. The corporation pays $2,000 a month to them. But they only report. Oh, they only report one thousand. Well, you write off the rent as an expense on the corporation, and then the the rent income goes on their personal side. But they have all these other houses that have you know mortgage interest deductions and stuff like this. So by the time they write it all off and everything else, it, they almost don't pay any taxes. Oh, it's not like they're writing off, writing off the. The corporate warehouse rent as one thousand. That's I misheard you. Yeah, they're you know they were set it up kind of smartly to tell you the truth because they own the warehouse personally in their own names individually, and the corporation just leases the warehouse from them in the corporation's name. So the corporation pays them rent. So the corporation in. Is that market fair market rate that the corporation is paying on that warehouse? Yeah, the twelve grand a month. I believe it's fair market rate for the building. Actually, it's under, I think, based on the size of the square foot of the warehouse and the location of the warehouse in regards to in regards to the L.A. Harbor and stuff like this. Pretty amazing stuff. But um, they're an interesting couple business-wise and tax-wise and stuff, because there's always something new coming up with them. <laughs> so, see, they need the portability of the estate tax. See, it was valuable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always think it's funny that they always have to pay tax on their Social Security benefits. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm a multitasker. I was texting, two phones, and chatting all at the same time. For those of you who missed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's important stuff, though. Well, you got to keep going. You got to keep working. Uh, right now, my employees are working harder than I am. Well, that's good. <laughs> Anybody seeing Terry over there blowing her nails? <laughs> I gotta hire someone soon. 
I don't hire anybody. I hire virtual assistants. It. Oh, I don't trust them. I have had great experience. I've had the same one, and she gets other assistants to help me um, if she's not available. I've had the same one for over eight years, and it's it's awesome. I I don't have to worry about. If they get lost in a hurricane, I bet Terry would volunteer for you. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> See, I have a built-in helper in the room next door, but I'm still having to train her. <laughs> oh, is that a family member? Uh, wife to be. Oh, cool! Congratulations. <laughs> Jeez, Bruce. <sighs> I was well, then there you go. You don't need an assist. You don't need anybody. You just well, it's hard to work with your spouse, though. Hey, no, there you go. <laughs> I can train people and be as calm, cool, and collected no matter how bluntly let's put this that they're not that smart and take my time and, and get them through it. Right, but, but if they can't be. Family members of someone else, I just kind of look at them and go, like, you're smart enough, you should be able to pick this up. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is difficult. I was interviewed the other day, and it just happened to be like the worst day of dealing with my husband Brad who does run the company and I work you know in the office and she interviewed me and she wanted to know how it is working with your husband or your spouse or you know or, or a family member on a day-to-day -day basis I, I kinda had to sugarcoat it a little bit <laughs> I can imagine it just happened to be a really bad day but you know what overall at the end of the day we both kinda put our heads together and we we, it works out, but I do know I have other contractors that they can't have their spouses work with them or anything like that. They just they can't do it. Yeah, because it's just too, everything's too close. Right, and to be honest with you, I don't want to go get a job. I don't work well with others. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm self-employed. That's why I'm self-employed too. See? And that's the thing is, is that's why I love being able to do what I do. And I can still enjoy my kids' experience. I can still go deal with them. And I can still work. And eat cookies and banana cake. And eat cookies cake. and then do laundry and dishes all at the same time. Well, I like the fact that I could start working at 12 midnight and finish at 6 in the morning. And then I could sleep half the day if I want to. Yeah, well, if you want to, if that's what you do. See, I'd, I'd, I'd never get a cold of my clients that way. Yeah. Oh, my clients always. My clients send me emails and text messages and phone me at one o'clock in the morning because they know I'm up. Yeah, I just wouldn't respond at that point. I can't handle that. <laughs> there's got to be. There's got to be a happy medium. I mean, we work long hours, <laughs> but I don't call you and text you, and Bruce. No. Okay. Good. I probably yeah, should. <laughs> nah, you don't want me doing that. Well, T Tina is very excited. The Terminators are here, she says. <laughs> I did. Well, she, 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 she's typed it twice. <laughs> I'm excited. My my sprinkler guys are here putting sprinklers in my backyard. It's about time. Nice. I know. Very exciting. Yeah, i got to do that myself. Um... <laughs> I have a I well I have a good guy, guys I should say. Let me know if you need a referral or whatever. I'm too cheap just to pay our gardener to do it. That's yeah, right. So you guys are almost does, neighbors, aren't you? I know we are yeah. practical. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Seth. David. We're really Hi. twenty minutes from each other. Yeah. If if that. If that yeah I don't the gar actually the gardener that I use is the same guy that does the sprinklers and he does really well. We just changed. You know, bottom line, he, he is not the cheapest one, you know, out there. Um, but I'll be honest with you, in just two weeks' time, um, my yard is totally different just by, you know, him taking care of stuff and weeding properly. And that's the thing is the most of them don't do it, or at least he says he does it now. Yeah. And I believed him. Our backyard just set up a little differently. It's, it's wow, it's been a long time since someone's breathed hard in my ear, Seth. <laughs> wow. 
Did you he's enjoy it? To, he's just happy to see you. <sighs> What's going on, Bruce? Oh, lack of work. <laughs> Employees are working more than I am. That's a good thing. That means you can manage the business. Ooh, Bruce, does that mean that you do have some open time? Um, I may yeah. have. I may have some... Stuff to talk about. Cool. I'm for hire. <laughs> wow. Well, it seems to me that. And I do go west. I don't go east. I do go west. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and we'll let that go. <laughs> yeah. However you take that. Oh. What were no, you getting ready to say, Seth? <laughs> um, that my new uh. My newest stream of revenue that seems to be building, if I can ever get time to put it all together, is all these companies offering me partnerships for reselling their programs. Wow. And they're all, I mean, they're all programs I can actually get behind. They're not programs I would sell just for the sake of making a commission. But uh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. And um, Intuit has asked me to do more videos for them. Nice. Very cool. So uh, life is good. Uh, the question then, of course, is um, how to get it all done. <laughs> With as little time as you have. Well, yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I definitely need to enlist some help, but I don't know that many other people. I mean, first of all, if people are asking for screencasts in my style, then it has to be me because I'm the one they're asking for. So I can't sub that out to anyone. Um, you know, a lot of the rest of it I certainly can. So what I'm sort of hoping happens is that I get more and more of the private training business, which I can give out to other accountants like Bruce and Harold, who work with me on that now. Um, you know, and so if I can get that built to a level where that can substantially support me, then I can really focus on just building educational content. The challenge, of course, is always that, you know, building that content is unpaid time, so I can only do it in my spare time. Yeah. So, I'm trying. I'm trying to build a library for the QuickBooks for Mac, and its spare time just isn't there. Yeah. Well, you know what? If you have, like you said just a minute ago, um, that you don't have work, then that's the time to do it. I mean, I had in May it was probably my slowest month ever in the history of my career since I started Nerd Enterprises. And I use that time to finish my school of bookkeeping. You know, that's the bottom line for me was, all right, if I don't have the paying work to do right now, I'm just going to focus on stuff that's going to pay me later. You know, one way or the other, right. I'm going to put time in that's going to, you know, churn income. <laughs> you know, and then somehow I find that, you know, if you subscribe like I do to kind of laws of attraction, <laughs> then the way I feel is if I'm focusing my energy and effort on doing something productive, that will bring more productive activities back to me, you know. I agree. The way it works. Yep. It's like the busier I keep myself, the busier I get. If I kind of, you know, back off and stop working, get lazy, then, you know, that's kind of the message I'm sending out there. That's what comes back. <laughs> That's how my day went yesterday. It didn't go very well for the rest of the day. My day is changed today. Life so, is good. Some days you do need to take a day off and say, you know what, I'm done. I've, yeah. I've done a lot of that recently, actually. Some days I wake up and I just realize my mental state is such that I am no good to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> including yourself. Including myself, and I acknowledge that. And that's when it's time to like go take a sick day, even though I may not be like sick with a fever. Sick, you know, it just means that I need rest. <laughs> well, my um, my morning started off yesterday with a client telling me that his wife left him, packed her bags, and left him over a remodel. Well, that might be a blessing in disguise. Well, that's where I was at. It. But to find out that she didn't leave. She just left for a couple hours. He lied to us. <laughs> He's mental. Oh, he thought <laughs> that they had a fight and he thought she would really left? Yes. Okay, that's odd. Um, the guy is... Uh, I'm going to just say nicely. He's just a mental case. That's all it is. And... He literally, unfortunately, ruined my day yesterday, and I was really sad that it had to be so negative. But 
Today's a good day. We learned. Okay. Well, that's always nice. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Hey, Ted got his lower third up. All right. He's, it's been there. Has it? No, he got lost for a while. Oh. Um, Hey, where's my lower third go? I don't know. Mine was to, on. Do you want me to send you a logo? Yeah, can you? <laughs> <laughs> send you the one I sent Terry. No, now I'm... And if you need more bookkeepers, Seth, Terry is available. Cool. Well, it looks like I'm going to have work for Tina, finally. That came through. Good. Nice. Did 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 the one we were talking about? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's, well, that's the one you're talking about. Okay, and you're giving yeah. that to Tina. What? You're giving that to Tina? Yeah, I promised it to her. That's awesome. God, I feel. Oh yes. <laughs> Somebody I know. Good. 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 <laughs> I've been doing a lot more point of sale system installs lately. That's been interesting. Is that do you do uh, QuickBooks POS, Ted, or what yeah. else do you do? Yeah, QuickBooks POS and Microsoft Dynamics um, point of sale system. What do you like? How would you compare the two? Uh, they're not even compatible with each other. So why would I use QuickBooks POS versus Microsoft? Um, most people don't need Microsoft Dynamics unless you're having really a multiple store operations and you're doing, you know, three, four, five million a year in the store location. Um, QuickBooks point of sale, we'll crash at those levels. Gotcha. All right. So in other words, you when you when your needs are greater than what QuickBooks POS can support, then you go to Microsoft. Yeah. There's just and Microsoft has been around a lot longer and. The way they do everything is just it just makes more sense counting wise a lot of times. I mean, it just just works better. <laughs> gotcha. I mean with QuickBooks Point Cell works for, you know, like really great for a really small retail environment and stuff like that. <laughs> and where you have you know, less than three or four stores. And you're not really looking for all the other stuff, the bells and whistles. I see. What's so funny? Terry's trying to get a raise. Oh, <laughs> 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 We, we we were Terry and I were talking the other day. We were needing more POS clients. I don't know. Well, Ted, what do you think? I mean, I always felt like POS was a lot of headaches, and it was hard to make money as a consultant with it because I'd end up having to charge the client more than they really want to pay. Um, well, I kind of have a flat setup fee, and then or migration, I charge another uh, by the hour for that. So basically, is, is if I go in and set it up, and I spend two or three hours training someone, and then you then give them another three hours later on, I charge a flat eight hundred dollars, and usually that's less than a day's worth of work for me. And then for migration, I charge one fifty an hour to move okay. data from one system to another system. Yeah, no, that's about what I charge. That is what I charge hourly, anyway. Um, I've done like maybe two, you know, just kind of sync ups between the QuickBooks financial <laughs> software and QuickBooks POS. Right. But I kind of convince them on the flat fee, and then I kind of convince them that, hey, listen, you're going to get a couple extra hours just being able to call me and talk to me later on. And right. they kind of like, okay. So once you kind of like, spell it out to them, they go, all right. And then I just basically tell them, you really need someone to show you the ins and outs of this because it has little quirks that you may not realize of how to, you know, you have, 
how you need to receive you need to receive all your merchandise in, and you need to do it all inside of QuickBooks Point of Sale because if you try to do it in your financials, you'll just mess up the inventory and stuff, inventory values and everything. Gotcha. I've seen people where they don't do the they receive the merchandise in point of sales, but they don't receive the invoice within the point of sales, and it just messes things up because they don't put in the correct dates and stuff like this, and then you know the average cost, you know, just gets messed up and all this other stuff. It's just it becomes a nightmare. So I tell yeah. them, even though it may sound simple, you really need to have someone sit there and hold your hand for a few hours to show you how to do everything correctly. Right. So how long do you think a typical install should take for QuickBooks POS? Um, you know, depending on their computer system and how antiquated it is, <laughs> and usually they're pretty antiquated, I usually have to get the clients first to upgrade their computer system. Gotcha. And um, usually I get... The last one I did took about five hours. Yeah, I was going to say, for me, my experience is it usually does take pretty much a full day to get it done. Yeah, and then you have, um, I, I, Ted brought up about the um, the inventory and everything. I've done a few of them myself, and I, and I always end up having to go back or spend time on the phone walking them through because they mess up their inventory because they're not doing it right. So I think the training is a really, really important part of that. And that's what I think takes the most time. I stopped doing it for that reason. Mm -hmm. It is very time consuming. It is, no, because you have to, and it's like very specific little things you have to do and do it in a certain order to get the two pieces of software to talk to one another. Yes. And, it's, and it usually never works the first time. You have to troubleshoot it, you know. it's. I, I think in the two or three installs I've done, no, not, not one of them. You know, work the first time. We had to play with it for a while. That's what ends up taking all day. Yeah, I haven't had that problem. The only problem I had was when they were running uh, Looper and they had to update the server because the computer, when I got there, believe it or not, crashed. So I had to order another computer for them, take the old hard drive out, transfer all the data over to the new one, and then there was. And then it was running Windows 7 and setting Windows XP, and so Windows XP didn't want to talk with Windows 7, mm -hmm. and that took, you know, half the afternoon to get those two computers to talk. Yeah, that's where I've had a lot of problems, is exactly there, where the financial software is on an older machine with XP, and the POS system is on a Windows 7 computer. Ted, have you seen the 2013 POS? Yeah, I actually have it already. I have it too. I I haven't sold it to anybody yet, though. Yeah, it's. I think it's kind of slick. I think the idea that you can actually take items to a trade show and select those items and put it on your phone and then sell it and then bring it back and then sync it with your point of sale system without missing a beat is a great feature. Well, that's the way it should be, especially these days. That's the way everything's going. You know. Mm -hmm. Your phone uh, the, the, is more the, the, and more becoming your little cash register. The, the new POS is very, very nice compared to later versions. Yeah, I mean, 10 was a disaster. QuickBooks Point Cell 10 was a disaster. It took them 14 updates before they got it stable. Wow. And clients were complaining like there was no tomorrow about it. it Clients were actually asking if they could go back to version nine or eight. <laughs> but I actually particularly like thirteen. Around yeah, thir thirteen is very very nice. I've been playing with it with my uh, extracts that I sell. It's very nice. Yeah, I have a the newest client I picked up for the point of sale. I actually ordered the system for them yesterday, actually, and uh, they sell um, home microbrewery supplies and provisions. So they're in their beer making, and it's 
funny, I went to go to work on Monday and couldn't believe it between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning, the guy sold like a thousand hours worth of beer supplies. And I'm going, good business to be in. <laughs> yeah, well, then there's a lot of people making their own booze. Yeah, and he's closed two days a week, too, which I think is really interesting. He's only open five days a week and he works it himself. Nice. I know, I know I've had people inquire, inquire to me, can they use my stuff in flavoring their beer? And I'm thinking, I don't think that works like that. I think it's a whole different process for the beer flavoring. Hey, I have no clue how any of this stuff is done, but for the hour that I was there, I was like, wow. For a second, I thought you said awesome. flavor their beard. That's what I thought you said, too. <laughs> I was like, now we're, now we're getting kinky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ted. I didn't mean to interrupt. All right. I didn't hear you, so I had. You're better off. <laughs> <laughs> Most people are better off if they just can't hear me. Um, I have a lady upstairs in my condo. She's probably, I don't know, 75. She makes uh, moonshine out on the porch. I like her. And what she does is she goes to Costco and buys crates of oranges, peels them all, and drops them in, and then sells the oranges. Drops them in, lets them soak in the moonshine, and sells jars of oranges. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I'm originally from North Carolina, so I probably have some really old relatives that have been in prison for moonshining. It's a lot better than jello shots. <laughs> Oi, well, it's been an hour. Really? Jeez. Time flies when you have fun. Yeah. Seth spent most of the time on the phone. Hopefully well, I had was, a shower. Hopefully it was some of that was billable. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> a very good friend of mine who's been struggling to find work for the past year, finally found a really good, secure, stable job. So he's calling to let me know. Well, that's very good. Congratulations to him. That's good. Yeah, I was very happy for him. He, uh, he, he really got screwed over by his last company. I mean, just all politics. He was a top producer in sales for this company. And his boss got an opportunity to go work at another one of their offices, took it, and so he posted up to take over his office. And then I guess it didn't work out for the boss. The boss came back, felt threatened by his wanting to take over. And next thing he knows, not only doesn't he have a job managing an office, which he deserved, he had earned it, um, he didn't have a job at all. <laughs> I mean, it was just the stupidest crap. So, you know, two, two of my employees were top performers where they were, and they both got politicked out, more or less. Which is exactly why I'm a very big proponent of starting your own company, because then you will truly be rewarded for your skills. Skillses. That's why I don't work for anybody. <laughs> yep, me too. <laughs> Except for Terry. Terry needs to work for Bruce forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to sub-work out with you. Kind of be a sub for someone else. Oh, kids today. All right, well, I got to jump and Terry, is, some... are you looking for work? Or you need more work? Is that what you're saying? She, she, she needs more work. Oh, okay. Good to know. Good to know. Right, right now, she only has two clients that don't require her full time. Oh. All right, then. Well, I will definitely keep that in mind. And school full time? Oh, my gosh. Terry, you're good with Excel, right? She's excellent with Excel. <laughs> She's you. You might be the king. She's the queen. Okay. Aww. You guys are a match made in heaven. Don't tell my wife that. I won't. And don't tell my friend Mike. <laughs> oh, sorry. Who who is married to Terry? <laughs> sorry, Mike. That doesn't have to be like that kind of relationship. Well, usually the phrase match made in heaven refers to that well, kind of relationship. <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> a professional match made Computer in heaven. Computer heaven. There you go. We're, okay. we're, we're, we're going to change the terminology of catchphrases right here on the MC yeah. Tax Hangout. Right. There you go. 
and then we'll see how it flies by Friday when we go to the ABO tax. The, I, can't, I can't say it the long version anymore, Seth. <laughs> That, that ha- in that hangout, everybody should know by now that all bets are off. Nothing applies. There are no rules. Yeah, there should be no rules. It shouldn't, maybe it shouldn't even be recorded at that point. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the less politically correct, the better. There you go. I'll have to remember that. All right. I'm like, I'm like the accounting Bill Maher. Y- y- yesterday I had a take a client to the IRS to fix some problems. It took me four hours to get everything ready. We sat there for two and a half hours, and it took us 12 minutes to fix two problems. Wow. wow. Story of my life. Well, the, the, the revenue agent that assisted us looked right at my client and said, I wish all of the people that came in here would bring their accountants that knew what the hell they were doing in here with them like you did. Yeah, I saw you post that yesterday on Facebook. Yeah. It, he 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 was very happy with the turnout. He he says you didn't really do anything. I said, yeah, I did. <laughs> I handed her the paperwork and I showed her where the mistake was, and she saw it and she fixed it. It was that simple. Gutchers. Yeah, well, IRS offices. I I I hate going there. I, <laughs> well, I. My grandmother was an auditor for the IRS for 35 years. I apologize. So I kind of like grew up during my summer vacations in the Ogden, Utah Service Center. Ew. Running around. So I have first-hand knowledge of stuff that most people don't even know about. (laughs) And shouldn't know about. Oh, yeah. (laughs) She used to tell me about all these clients, uh, not clients, but all the taxpayers and all the issues and stuff like this. And then she'd tell me about some of the, the taxpayers that had businesses that weren't legal, but they were still paying their taxes because they were more afraid of the IRS than they were of law and enforcement. <laughs> well, yeah, you're required to pay taxes on income derived from illegal activities. Yeah. It's, it's, it's stated right in the rule book. Yeah. yeah. That's it. I'm going to start a tax practice for prostitutes. <laughs> hey, most of them pay their taxes. And I'll convince them all to pay their taxes. And since the IRS is, that actually, the IRS is never going to refer any of those taxpayers to any law enforcement agency because they can't share that data unless subpoena. You know, so that people actually put down almost exactly what they do. <laughs> I, I have a few clients that are entertainers. <laughs> okay, but they're still, I assume, within the realm of what's legal. You're talking about, like, dancers, right? If you want to assume that, you go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> On that note... <laughs> Yes, it's 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 after the sixty minute hour. <laughs> Just took a few seconds to catch it. <laughs> and thanks everybody for stopping by today. And if you if, say it, say it, advertise, Seth. I can't say it still. Abo. Abo. Ab- advertise Abo. Hey, at least we got one tax question in today. There was two in there, wasn't there? Two? Yeah, Jan was talking about tax stuff for a little bit there. Oh, okay. Seth, I'm pimp your hangout. What? Who? Pimp, huh? Pimp your hangout. Oh, yeah. Friday morning, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Accounts, bookkeepers, and business owners. Be there, be square. Well, I'm not squared, that's for sure, so I'll definitely be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs> you kids have an absolutely fantastic day. I have to get on and do some cash flow projections. There we go. See everybody later, and have a great day. Bye. Bye.